Now, now this is the beauty of this. The way your system works is when you smell food, it stimulates secretions in the stomach. So this means you smell chicken, a certain type of food. Smell beef, different type of acid. You smell broccoli, different type of acid. So, so this, is, this is where digestion begins. So if you have healthy nose function, healthy brain function, you're going to have the healthy acid production. Now the problem is, and you know, like last week, had a patient come in, she would eat, she was super bloated afterwards, and the doctor prescribed her an antacid. Dumb or dumb? <laughs> Why? Because you're thinking the stomach actually breaks down the food and she's not breaking it down, so he's reducing the acid? Yeah, you know, common sense isn't there. But then, when it leaves the stomach, it's super acidic, and right next to the stomach, calcium and iron absorbed. Then a little bit further, you get the C vitamins. Then way down at the bottom, you get the B vitamins. So as the intestinal tract gets less and less acidic, different things are absorbed. Then it hits the colon, and that's where 90% of the body's water absorption occurs. And then there's healthy bacteria in the, whole, in the whole system. There's healthy bacteria inside of the stomach in that acid. There's healthy bacteria all the way through here. This is the scary thing. Genetically modified foods modify genetic, or gen, they change the DNA of the healthy bacteria that you have in your gut. Do you know what, what genetically modifying the DNA to the bacteria in your gut or intestinal tract do? I don't know. We've never done an experiment. Um, so, have your neighbors, if you don't like them, go out and purchase fast food. Okay? We'll follow them for a few years. We don't know. There's no human studies on it. We know the animal studies have infertility and colon cancer and diabetes. I don't know. Um, this is healthy stuff, but make sure it's not genetically modified. They do have now genetically modified tomatoes. But the phytonutrients, and this, this is what plants have developed over eons of time. They can fight fi viruses, funguses, and bacteria. We don't know how they do it. We do know that when we eat this tomato, that your risk of cancer falls. We do know that if you eat blueberries, your, your cholesterol drops, the tissue repair increases. We don't know how it does it because we're not putting money towards the research. Hell, there's 10,000 bioactive enzymes in a tomato. We've identified 5,000. We don't know how they interact. There's magic in this stuff. Now, anything you put in your mouth is going to go through the veins. You see, the, the, in, the way the intestinal tract works, there's veins around it. Food has to pierce the wall of that intestinal tract. But also, anything that makes too large of a hole in that intestinal tract allows larger proteins to get in. So neurotoxins, this means flu shots, vaccinations, um, MSG, uh, the V8 that has MSG in it. I mean, all the neurotoxins actually blow holes in the intestinal tract, causing a thing called leaky gut. Now, leaky gut allows large proteins to get into the bloodstream. Large proteins get into the bloodstream, they attach to the brain, opiate receptors in the brain. So if they attach to the opiate receptors in the brain, the brain literally gets starved of food. So the brain starts to atrophy. This is dementia. This is Alzheimer's. This is attention deficit disorder. This is why 100% of the kids that have autism or attention deficit disorder, you put them on a gluten-free, dairy-free diet, they, they do better. They do better if we didn't poison them in the first place, but, you know, what the heck. I guess rats are expensive. <laughs> Personal, I'd rather experiment on animals. But th this is beautiful. I mean, when you look at this system, it's just, just one system is dependent on another system. It's dependent on another system. The reason our healthcare system is backwards now is because they don't know. I've got an orthopedic surgeon as a patient. I was describing neurology to him, and he didn't know. I was describing um, nutrition, how he needs to get certain nutrients in his joint and stimulate proprioceptive firing so that his, his um, system can regenerate tissue faster. And he didn't know. And I'm going, wait a second, okay. So we have to change how your brain views your body. Oh, okay. You know, he, he didn't know th th this stuff. And that's why you're going to have a gastroenterologist. You're going to have an um, endocrinologist. You're going to have a hematologist. You're going to have all these different specialists in this area, and none of them know what the other guy's doing. And it doesn't work that way. See, this spleen here, 
that little tiny beautiful organ. It checks every red blood cell you got every 20 minutes. And the ones that aren't exactly perfect, because red blood cells only last about 120 days, it sends over, passes them over to the liver. Now the liver takes these red blood cells, breaks them down into bile and different protein constituents, so your body can, can break down fats. Without fats, your brain doesn't work, your immune system is, is screwed, I mean, nothing works, okay? So then, the liver stores and concentrates all of these bile acids inside of the gallbladder. So as soon, and you've got sensors right inside of the duodenum, this area in the intestinal tract here, as soon as fat hits that, that gallbladder screeches out. And then that fat gets in there and starts to break down and emulsify it. Then the pancreas actually drains through the same holes that the, that the gallbladder does. So the pancreas senses that, further secretes different enzymes so your body can break down proteins and also it is so bicarbonate so that it changes the acid it raises the acid to a little bit more base so then the the nutrients can break down all of this is happening it's such a beautiful harmony i i, I want you to 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 own it because this is how disease is reversed. You're not going to get this information from the doctor because he doesn't know. They don't take a lot of anatomy or physiology. They forget it. I don't care what profession you're in. You had to take some classes in school that you just butt muscled your way through and you don't remember the classes. I know. That's what the doctors are doing. They just passed the test. They might know a lot about, you know, hepatic function, liver function. They forgot what the spleen does. They, for, they never learned about nutrition. I, I mean, Charlotte Gerson, she's been curing cancer for about 80 years with her and her dad. I met her son this weekend, brilliant guy. You cannot have cancer in your body if you have a fully functioning pancreas. The pancreas gets depleted. It gets drained of its enzymes if you have overcooked meats. Why? Because it has two functions. It can regulate blood sugar and it can break down proteins. If you're breaking down proteins through your digestive juices, those enzymes are not available to break down abnormal protein formation in your body. Okay? Absolutely, absolutely essential. I mean enzymes. This, this is ideal. This is everything. We do an enzyme survey here. There's three different types. Food, there, it's inside food, metabolic and digestive enzymes. There's thousands and thousands of enzymes, and this, this is what your body is deficient in. Um, when you look at it, the T lymphocytes that your body has, they actually use enzymes to destroy cancer. That's why if you're having enzyme devoid foods, if food's heated over 120 degrees, it's killed of enzymes. If it's not living food, it's killed of enzymes. If it's preserved, it's killed of enzymes. Without enzymes, you die. You die a slow, horrible death. It's called disease. What I like, is in pineapples, brolamine. This is an actual enzyme inside of the pineapple itself. So does this mean that plants contain living enzymes? Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool.